Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live, and today we welcome back Michael Satrazimus, executive producer and director of Fear of the Walking Dead, and the brand new Tales of the Walking Dead premiering tomorrow, August 14th at 9 p.m. on AMC. Michael, thank you so much for coming back on our show. How are you doing? I'm doing good, good. Got up at uh, 4 o'clock this morning, cheating, cheating some nights, and... Uh... Oh, you know, man. but we're we're I'm loving loving Savannah, you know, and uh, lo- loving what we're going to be able to give to everybody and on fear this season. It's a real change of palate, and you know that kind of that low country grassland wetland thing look is is really uh, is really panning out. Well, so. you brought up Savannah, and I wasn't going to ask, but you know, you brought it up. Uh, this I've been to Savannah. It's a beautiful city, right by the ocean. Uh, different from Austin, Texas, where you guys were originally shooting. I mean, what kind of work goes into, I mean, is the audience supposed to know that the location has moved not to Georgia, but maybe to a neighboring Louisiana or something like that? Yeah. I I mean, I think, I think it's inevitable that you'll be able to see it, you know, when you, when you make that kind of a move that that drastic, um, you know, it gives you an advantage because you get a completely different color palette. You get different landscapes. You know, the survivors now have to struggle with a completely different environment. And then you can bring in new people. You can bring in new set pieces. You know, it's a it's a bit of a reinvention, which is really fun in a season eight. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not I love uh, I love creating more than anything. And and, uh, you know, feeling stagnant or maintaining, you know, this these this universe never never has provided that we keep reinventing all of the shows kind of every eight episodes or every year. And, uh, and a huge move like this in season eight is it has its advantages. I mean, at least creatively, it's really fun. It's really fun. You know, it's a brand, it feels like a brand new show. I can imagine. Now, before we get into your brand new show tales, which is premiering tomorrow, you were part of the comic-con panel uh, several weeks ago that presented, you were part of the tales of the walking dead panel and you got to reunite with a lot of old friends while presenting this brand new show to the rest of us. What was that experience like reuniting with Andy, Norman, Denai, and then the new people from Tales of the Walking Dead? And explain to us the environment you were in. Um, I mean, you know, the, the, I remember this franchise, this show, whatever, whatever you want to call it, this mega enterprise back from season one. And when we were in the, we're in the dirt and, uh, and people were telling us it's not going to do anything and we shouldn't get our hopes up high, you know, so high. And we were immensely excited looking into each other's eyes going, Ooh, there's something there. The story's there. Darabont started out with something amazing and, and it was infectious. And, uh, you know, it kind of Comic Con this year brought that full circle for me to to sit with Andy and Norman, you know, and and Melissa, and Janai, and uh, and just you know, look at each other and and kind of reflect on you know what what's what's happened. Twelve you know, years I mean, uh, later. Yeah, it's a you know it's a beautiful thing, but for those of us that remember the time when we were just shooting. And believing before anyone said, you guys are amazing and this is awesome and this, you know, any of that stuff, um, you know, there's only a few of us left and it was, it was really, it was beautiful to go into Comic-Con and, and hang out with those guys. And, you know, Andy and I, Andy and I had about a 45 minute, uh, uh, truck ride in through traffic where we just goofed around and talked about everything. I think we wrote a, a, a script about being uh, hijacked by a by a <laughs> show by a chauffeur in the truck, and the chauffeur of the truck started started joining in and been bringing in some story stuff. But that you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's amazing. It's the epicenter of everything that we we are, and you know, and we were you know we were much younger back then and a bunch of goofballs. Since you were driving in with with Andy, did they sneak him into the convention hall? Yeah, I was. My panel was before before, yeah, and I knew. You know, I was waiting there to hang out to watch the Walking Dead panel. This is the last one. That's a big deal. Yeah. And uh, and I knew and I knew that Andy and Denai were coming, and they were they were stuck in traffic there, 
And uh, and you, if you watch the panel, it's funny. You can see it start winding up into their arrival, and then someone goes, "Well, we'll talk about that again in a minute." Yeah. Which is normally, get them gimple, and they reset, and then they do a couple other things, and then they start talking again. And that was just they kept thinking he was about to arrive, and he didn't, and he was about to arrive, and he didn't. I mean, they arrived. I think you know. I mean, I little maybe thirty seconds before they came out, I hugged them and and started shooting this this video this video of them. And, uh, you know, running out on stage and then ran out into the audience and watched everyone erupt and go nuts. And, you know, it was beautiful. It was. It was. And, you know, you got to give credit where credit is due. AMC, all you guys really know how to keep a secret. <laughs> you guys have become phenomenally good at keeping a secret. And the way it was just brought out, it shocked everybody. Okay, so let's go, let's get into tales. okay? Everyone's really excited. The premiere is tomorrow. You were one of the uh, people that was tasked to getting this production off the ground, okay? Uh, even with the full weight and support of AMC behind you, how challenging is it to get a brand new production up and running from scratch? Uh, yeah, you know, it was Scott called me and, and asked me to talk to Channing and Channing called me who uh, Channing Powell, who's our showrunner, amazing, amazingly talented writer. And, uh, and kind of bought me in on, on how different these were going to be, what the anthology was going to be. And that is where the difficulty of starting this show sits, you know, six episodes in the apocalypse. Um, you know, you can, you can do it. It's been, it's been well shaped, uh, six very distinctly different, uh, episodes on a different timeline with a, in a different time zone with completely different actors coming in and out for every single week and a half. Um, no sets are shared, nothing. We didn't amortize anything. I mean, I think it's one set of stairs we amortized. That was wow. it that we shared. Otherwise everything was new. It is, it is immensely difficult. And that was the challenge just trying to, to stay ahead of it. You know, we had to buy an actually We had to get an additional stage because we ran out of stage space because we were trying to, could knock one down while we built the other one and then set up for the the other one you know so that it would literally you know we would they would construction would be building three episodes at the same time you know art department yeah it's just wardrobe wise it's cement you know i mean it's never ending because you're you're bringing in the new cast you're bringing in a new world you're bringing in a new environment a totally different story but um, i but, uh, i assume you must have been really psyched at the endless possibilities that an episodic anthology could bring to this universe. Yeah, it's the dream. You know, that's why it doesn't matter how hard the work is, you know, getting to, I, I, I listen, I would have, I directed three of the six. I would have directed six of the six if it was even anywhere possible, but in a nonlinear story there, there's just no way I would, I would still be alive. Um, but I, I loved all of them. Um, we, we started with 12 scripts. And had to kind of narrow them down to six and like what we could budgetarily, uh, you know, make and what kind of how we wanted to stretch the diversity of those six out. But, uh, you know, there's there's six other episodes floating out there that that I that I hope oh, get yeah. made as well, you know, and an endless supply of, of ideas. You know, you mentioned the chronology does as as a director and a producer on this show. Do, do you feel a new sense of freedom that you don't have to follow a certain time of events, a timeline of events, that every story could be at the beginning of the apocalypse, 10 years ahead, 30 years? There's no, you know, linear, you know, chronicle timeline here. It does. It does. It does feel fresh. It just feels fresh because you have a little movie. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're not. They're not just an episode. Um, we have jumped further. We have an episode that's further ahead than any of the shows have ever gone, which, you know, you can, it can open the door to stretching the lore, yeah. you know, to, to expanding things. Um, and it gives you that kind of opportunity. I mean, we, you know, we did a dark comedy, um, you know, it's a pretty, it's a pretty dark comedy and that was, was a very new. And, you know, I was, I, I had to grab that one for myself. And, uh, and I'm excited about it being released. I felt super uncomfortable during the whole shooting. I had to remind myself that you should feel uncomfortable. If you feel comfortable, then you're just making what, you know, you're the apocalypse, you know, this is, you know, this is going to be, I mean, it's, you know, it's still rooted on, on emotion and, yeah. 
and uh, and it, you know, but it is a it is dark comedy. It's got some. Oh, got there's some, a little bit. It's got of some that. laughs in it. We played with it. There's a lot of different things in there. AMC has been kind enough to share the first four episodes, and every episode, it's a whole different feeling and vibe. Now the premiere tomorrow, it's with uh, Terry Crews and Olivia Munn, uh, who have this amazing chemistry in the series premiere. Uh, you produced tomorrow's episode. Uh, when you were producing it and you were watching these two uh, veteran, m- talented performers, what were your thoughts on what they brought to that premiere episode that everyone's going to see tomorrow? Yeah, I just look, 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 Ron Underwood did an amazing job directing that episode. Uh, when I met Terry Crews, the first thing you get from him is what a fan he is of of your work you know he just he spent 30 minutes talking about what we were doing on the on the walking dead and how he's been you know dying to be a part of this for forever um you know olivia brings up you know this bright this bright light and, and a work ethic and to watch them bounce around together it was it was a joy you know it was it felt experimental with we're going to bring in you know talented people and things and you know like we're going to bring in more famous people it felt like maybe that was going to be experimental and and in it's it wasn't didn't turn out that way at all you're just bringing in people that are truly fans that just get to have that walking dead experience get to have that one episode that is like a a, a, a beginning to a finish a little film and and uh and that that became very exciting it's just watching people come in and and being pumped exactly. to play these roles and to be in the apocalypse, you know, and, uh, and I, I can't tell you, I mean, Poppy Lou, uh, when I went down to visit that set, there's one of the directors I didn't, uh, one of the ones I didn't direct. And, uh, I went down there to, to visit and I saw her jump up into the air. It was pouring rain, all mud everywhere, jump up into the air and flatten out and hit the mud and then roll around in the mud. And then spring up, and all I could see was her teeth smiling. She was just covered in mud. And I went over, and I'm like, so nice to meet you. And she's like, I hope one day you get to meet me when I'm clean, you know, because I'm not always this dirty, but I'm having a blast, you know. And uh, that's infectious, you know, yeah. like that kind of atmosphere. And I think, you know, that's what's unique about this kind of, uh, you know, anthological storytelling is is you can really get some people that, that are pumped to, you know, to spend 10, 12 days with you. And become a being part tortured. of this, <laughs> yeah. this legacy. Uh, yeah. Episode two is your episode. The one you directed, it, I believe it's called Deja Vu. You mentioned comfort level a couple of minutes ago. That episode, Deja Vu, is an episode unlike any kind of episode we have seen in this world of The Walking Dead. Uh, it is really a, a bizarre story, but yet told in a, such an interesting way. It happens at the beginning of the apocalypse. Uh, did that push you out of your comfort zone as a director doing these this show for 12 years, directing for over eight? Did, that, did Deja Vu help push you out of your comfort zone a little bit? Yeah, I, t- I took that one because it made me feel uncomfortable because it felt like it was going to be a challenge, and I like to uh, I like scaring myself a little bit. So I, like, I try to take episodes that I think you know are very high risk, high reward, um, and that I could ruin. And I feel like it just kind of it, it forces me to to work harder. Um, that one, you know, it, it it was way outside of the box, but like why wouldn't I want to do that then? You know, it's, yeah. a, it is really, really, really out there and it did make me feel uncomfortable. And, uh, and I really wanted to feel uncomfortable, you know, it's, uh, and then, you know, and then having, you know, having Parker Posey and Jillian Bell, um, I mean, they were great. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a reward and being able to bounce around, you know, even laughing in the apocalypse, it's for Christ's sake. I feel like it would, ha- it would happen a lot. You try. I would. I'd run. I'd be running around the apocalypse trying to be a comedian. I try to make people laugh. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I got. You know, you mentioned Parker Posey and Julian Bell. They were the two main characters in Deja Vu, and they were just absolutely great in embracing the roles. Uh, having to welcome in so many new actors, characters into this world over the years. Uh, 
you mentioned the energy being infectious and contagious with everyone. Uh, do they just, you know, when new people come in, even for our tales being for one episode, do they do they feel embraced by the family right away? Do they feel a part of the universe right away, or they're a little bit nervous? Uh, I mean, I don't know if they're n- nervous or, or not. I mean, we you know we try to talk to everybody when we're casting them and try to you know try to have a relationship with with these people. And I'm I'm pretty honest. You know, I mean, I, I don't I don't say it's going to be easy yeah. or fun. You know, I say it's going to be extremely rewarding. It, it, you know, it's Half of the apocalypse is a bit a bit method, you know. <laughs> you know, people are really running through the mud, falling, getting tackled by walkers, you know, charging through the water. You know, even the action scenes are are rough, and you know they're soaking wet. And you know, I mean, we, the environment is is pretty much always the environment. There's no way, no way of making a you know a gross, dirty swamp out of roses. No, so no, um, that's true. That's true. So yeah, that's- so we got to build everybody up into it. But I, I find that everyone is pumped. You know, they, they, they're they ready. You know, I think, I feel like, you know, we, we found a cast of people that were ready to charge. I mean, I had the, the one I had with, uh, with Jesse T. Usher and and, and Luan and, and, uh, and Beth uh, Davids. That, it was like all nights in firelight. And uh, we had a huge cast, and it was cold. It was the middle of winter. It was freezing. And those guys were pumped every single night, just charging. With, you know, so it's kind of a, you know, a, a, a medieval-style yeah. story, a, you know, a little, a little bit of, you know, mob mentality thing. But, boy, they were pumped up like a, like a mob. I would be screaming cut sometimes, and they were still just get going. Get so going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it, was, it was amazing, you know I mean? And then for me, that pushes me, so. It's uh, you know, I think if you if you get lucky and you bring in the right people, you can do something special. Absolutely. Let's talk about fear for in the time that we have left. Um, season seven wrapped uh, and ended several months ago. Uh, when you learned the outline for season seven and you found out that Strand Coleman Domingo is going to be returning to his old ways again, uh, what were your initial feelings on that whole story for? season seven. Uh, I, was, I, I was excited it's it's nice you know what i mean when he he turns it on when he goes bad guy he turns it on when he you know when he goes you know strong-handed and uh then i always liked that about his character he was just shifty he was gonna just take care of himself but to do it in a large scale where he's you know where he's building a community and uh and walling it in and basing a little bit on the revenge for everybody else that you know that uh that never believed in him yeah. um but you know it's just it's it's a good it's a sweet spot and and coleman plays it so well so. jenna elfman was our guest and she i asked her the same question and she said between takes he was just like a boy in a candy store he was just having so much fun with it uh season seven revealed strand's biggest vulnerability and that vulnerability was alicia okay uh, how critical was that father-daughter relationship with Strand's character, with his character arc uh, in that season seven in regarding Alicia? Uh, do you think she was his downfall and the downfall of the tower? I don't, I mean, I, I think he was going to fall on his own at some point in time, you know, I mean, but I think that, that they're, their bond together, their need for each other and for each other to be okay is, is so important. That does drive a lot of their decisions. Um, I don't know if Strand could have kept that thing together, you know, even well, if he would have brought Alicia in. So, uh, As you were getting the scripts throughout this that 16-episode season, did you at all have, wonder – was Coleman going to make it to season eight? Because did you see another redemption arc left for him? Well, you do, you do think about whether it's going to happen or not. I mean, you know, I, I am a little bit privy to yeah. the stories even ahead of them being, being written. So, but you know, you, you see things building in certain seasons where you're like, eh, it feels like that's what it's going to. I mean, you know, we have a, we have a way or, you know, not a pattern, but a way of setting people up to, to go that honors them, you know? Mm-hmm. So anytime you start building, you wonder anytime the writers in any of the shows start building, you wonder if, 
if maybe they're going to start going, if they're, maybe they're going to go, you know, because yeah. it's just, it's a tribute. So that you build them up, you build their story up and send them out. And see what know, happens. Yeah. Now, yeah. we lost Alicia. She's not dead, which is very smart of the writers, but she's off the show for now. But the door is open. The door is open. Like Madison, Kim Dickens returned uh, yep. in the final episode. Uh, so are you nervous with Alicia now not being on the show? How fans are going to react? Or you think everyone else is going to pick up and fill the void? What are your thoughts with Alicia now gone? Well, I think we have a lot of new story in a brand new environment. Um, for me personally, you know, not having Alicia around, she's... She's my same, same, you know, we, uh, we, we have a lot of similarities just as big personality traits and things. So, uh, I truly, I love her. It was, uh, it was amazing to, you know, go through the prep with her, have her shadow me and, and get into directing and, and, uh, you know, she's a very special person who's going to have an amazing career. Oh, yeah. Um, so me personally, I'm going to miss him, you know, but that's, I spent my last decade as you know, as like losing my friends, yeah. you know, and you know, and then realizing uh, having lost any of my friends, you still talk to them and you see them, and you know things are okay. So, um, you know, but she could come back. Exactly. You know? We don't yeah. know. We don't know. Uh, it's really n no doubt. Twenty twenty three is going to be a crucial year for this entire franchise. The main series is coming to an end. It only has eight episodes left. Fear is going to continue. Tales is starting tomorrow. We've got more spinoffs coming down the pipe. Going into 2023, what are your thoughts and feelings uh, with that anchor being the main show ending this fall? Well, I mean, a show can't go on forever. I mean, The Walking Dead is such a, a special show it's okay that it ends, you know I mean? It's yeah. just not, it's a, uh, it is special. It won't, another season doesn't make it more special. Um, I love that it's breathing life. These, these split offs and all these little series are, are allowing stories to be, still be told. And, mm -hmm. uh, I'm very excited about tales. The anthology is, you know, it's just, it's, it's just really, it's, it's great. And, and Channing and Scott, you know, have some really wicked ideas to, to play around with the ap apocalypse, to kind of romanticize it, to have fun with it, and yeah. uh, and I think that's that's a that's a it should for me at least you know being nostalgic about the end of of The Walking Dead, it feels like I'm still doing a tribute to it by doing tales, you know, <laughs> because I'm playing around with it. I'm you know I'm still having fun with it, and you know I mean it's it's a, such a a huge piece of everything and who I am. So I'm excited, but like you say. It is a very big year for for the franchise. We'll, yeah. we'll see what what all happens, and you know, and it'll be up to up to the fans as, as always. Absolutely. Well, we're out of time. I just want to have have one final question before we go. Uh, I'm assuming there was some kind of rap party for the main show when it ended in Sonoya, Georgia. Were you able to go or attend the celebration? Yeah, I was. I was. Yeah, I was shooting tales in Atlanta, so I got to go and. And hang out and it was literally they invited everybody from i think the last decade so even people that did seven seasons and didn't do you know i mean yeah. it, because they're still such a huge part of the of the family um so it was uh i mean it was about three hours i think i took three steps and then the next person three steps for three hours and it but it was beautiful and i was i was nervous i almost didn't go to the rap party because i was worried about about the end like yeah. I'm bad at goodbyes. I'm really good at hellos. Yeah. Um, but when I got there, I hadn't seen so many people for so so long. It wasn't goodbye. It was all hello. So yeah. it, it kind of you know it was fun to hang out. You know, um, you know. But Comic Con felt more of a resolve, more of an end. Yeah. To it's it it's than, never an than, end, even I mean, than the rap party. Yeah. It sounds all the people you've met over the. I mean, they've become friends, and it's never goodbye. You guys may get probably get to work together again. It's just new beginnings. Oh, we will. Yeah, it's new beginnings. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank our guest, Michael Satrazimus. Again, the show is called Tales of the Walking Dead. It is premiering tomorrow night on AMC. If you have, if you are a subscriber to AMC+, Plus, episode one is now available on AMC+. Plus. 
check it out. If you don't have AMC Plus, it's premiering on AMC tomorrow, August 14th at 9 p.m. Again, a big thanks to director, executive producer, the person who's been with the Walking Dead universe since day one. Started out as a, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. Started out as a cam, camera operator, became a director of photography, became a director. Now he's an executive producer on two of the spinoff shows. I mean, congratulations, Michael. You <laughs> you you you're great, and you're a great friend. Thank you so much. Do you have any final thoughts you want to share before we go? uh you know i mean i i am I'm, I'm i'm living living my dream and i hope i hope it continues i am very excited about tales please watch it yes it's uh yeah i think i think it's fantastic yes really deep. please watch it every episode is going to be something different and it's going, going to surprise you again thank yeah. you to our guest michael satrazimus i want to thank our audience those of you who are tuning in live and those who will be tuning in later on Till next time, on behalf of Michael and myself, stay safe and always stay walking. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Fisk.